And here's basically an animation which goes a lot slower than I talk. So it's showing you the first how it went from one strand to two strands. And all of these dots here, all those nucleotides and bases, free roaming and a buffer, and basically that, right, this atom right here, well, it looks like an atom, but it's actually TAC polymerase, which is working to take all of those dots, and well, nucleotides, and create two new strands. And here's the first strand, spitting, spitting, denaturing. Here you go, the primers, and then your polymerase is taking all the nucleotides and creating two new strands. Now here is the de detailed mechanism of RT-PCR, but this is using the OVO-DT primer, which is using, like I said, the T-tail. This is an RNA strand which has the poly-A tail, and then you have the T-tail, which is attaching or it's complementing to the poly-A tail. And after that, isolating the RNA, you're going to do RT to reverse transcribe it to DNA, and then PCR, which is you're going to amplify and make more DNAs. But you could also, on top of using the Oglio DT primer, the long tail of T, you could also use specific primers. Now, in this case, if you want to see if a person had cancer, you have the RNA, and then you can have a primer that codes for a specific gene for a normal gene, and one that codes specifically for a cancerous gene. And in this case, the person is very lucky, because as you see, the primer for the cancerous gene, or C gene, didn't attach to the RNA, so there's no cancer on that. So the person is happy, you have cancer day. <laughs> and here's a PCR product because the primer that, that basically coded for a normal gene attached to the RNA and then it was able to have a PCR product. And in this case here, basically one is this, this is lane of um, the gel electrophoresis. And the first lane is just showing the markers, which is just basically standard. And two is showing the, the, the products from the primer attaching to the RNA, which is the NAP with the normal gene. And then you have for the C gene, which is the cancer gene, and there's nothing there. So the person doesn't have cancer. Yay! And here are the reagents used in RT-PCR. Now these are all the things that I used. This is all the things I said was in the mystery, the question mark, what's in the buffer. Yeah. Show you the magic erase board. Right here. Basically, the microcentrifuge tube, which is like this. It just, it's much smaller than this. It's much smaller than this, but it's the blown up version. And basically, you're going to have the buffer. And then inside the buffer, you're going to have all of these materials here. Basically, you have, well, we already used the reverse transcriptase enzyme. You're going to have the DNA here. And then after cycles of, of heating and cooling, you're going to split the DNA, like I said, denaturing it. And then primers are going to attach to those ends and then create copies of it. But all of those, like the Oglio DNTPS, are all basically this, are all of the nucleotide bases that are just free moving in the buffer, just swimming out there. And then you're going to have TAC polymerase, which is going to take them and create two new, or more DNA strands. And then you're obviously going to have the RNA. Now here are the materials or equipment, yeah, equipment used in RT-PCR. You see, you have the microcentrifuge tubes that, you know, my drawing isn't perfect. And I said it was bigger, and obviously here you go, it's smaller. And here's the thermal block cycler. Now I told you guys that they're going to be using cycles of heating and cooling. This is basically after you have all the reagents in the buffer and inside the microcentrifuge tube, you know, put it inside the thermal cycler, and it's going to heat it and cool it so that the DNA will separate and then come together after cooling and create many copies of the DNA strand. Then after that, you're going to use gel electrophoresis to see if a gene is over or underexpressed, which caused, which for the protein, which caused the illness. Now, applications. Here's a situation where a person, let's say a patient had cancer. Now, let's say we know that there are two causes of that cancer, which, in, like I said, it can, causes of, of illness could be the overexpression or the downregulation or underexpression of the protein. In this case, we know it's the onco, they could have the overexpression of the oncogene, which is or called NIC, which is a cell promoting gene, which tells the cell to divide. And basically, if this is overexpressed, the cell is going to divide too much, and which is going to cause cancer to tumors. And the downregulation of the tumor suppressor gene, which is going to keep the tumors from occurring, is called the P53 gene. Now, if this is downregulated, obviously tumors are going to occur. So now, let's say the doctors know that there are these two causes. So now that you know these two specific 
options that could have caused the cancer, you can use specific genes, specific primers to attach to these genes at an RNA level, like I said, RNA, and then you can reverse transcribe it to cDNA, and then use PCR to replicate and create many copies, then using gel electrophoresis, you can see which one is over, underexpressed, or normal, so you can see the copies. There are pros and cons to RT-PCR. The pros are obviously, you see the causes of an illness, it's really great. But also, and there's also advanced technology coming out, which I'll tell you next slide. But, and also allow researchers to see gene expression, overexpression, underexpression. But also the cons are that it's a very sensitive process. A lot of the materials are sensitive to salts, alcohols, and also using, you know, RNA and DNA, which is very sensitive, which you know, is just bad for the results. And the future, like I said, of RT-PCR. Now, already there's called this quantitative RT-PCR, also called real-time RT-PCR, which is basically a very fast version, which uses even different equipment, like right here. And even like compared to thermal block cycle, it even looks more advanced already. So like there are new advancements in the future of RT-PCR. And then there's kinetic RT-PCR, which uses more math and less experiments. So there's less chance of error. So, as you see, there's already a great future to RT-PCR, which will benefit all humanity. And acknowledgments, I'm finished, you guys can sleep later. <laughs> but I'd like to acknowledge the HHMI, which basically funded this and allowed this to occur so that kids like me can have a cool presentation like this. <laughs> and, uh, new stuff. I'd like to acknowledge all my friends here who went through it and all who are sitting right there in the future. I think that's laptop. And Miss Ray is not here, unfortunately, but right there. <laughs> All of you guys for listening to it, and you guys can ask me any questions. Embarrass me, don't ask me about my childhood. <laughs> and the slide with um, the cancer, how could the underexpression cause cancer? Well, because. Oh, well, <laughs> <laughs> so the gene that was underexpressed with a protein called the P53 gene is a tumor suppressor gene, and that keeps tumors from occurring. So if that's downregulated and it's not working enough, then tumors. So that's that's why it's. I'd like to know myself, but it's, I know that there's a lot of advancements in it already. So there's your presentations. Anyway, don't be shy. Don't run this side of the room. I'm a freshman. Okay. Of course. But I hope you guys like my presentation. Oh, yeah. Also, we did three projects after this, which we also have a website, like Omar and James said. We have a website where we did research on our favorite protein and model organism. I, myself, I did cast space because it's involved in cell death, so I thought that was cool. But it's also very interesting, I learned, but I picked it because that was used for the program cell death. And I also did research on the model organism of the Dicti, which are social amoeba, which I thought was very interesting as well, which is on my website, so just to check it out. And, uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs>